Matthew from FiberglassSupply.com. In this video, we're going to introduce you to the Zipper Longboard Skateboard. And that's this board right here. It's a 31 inch board. It's a composite board with either a foam or a balsa core. In the video, we're going to show you doing a foam core. It uses fiberglass skins to provide the stiffness and the strength. And what I like about it, it has a little spring and pop to it. I like that in my longboards. So watch the video and enjoy. If you've got any questions, please let us know. All right, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to prepare the core. In this case, we need to perforate it, where we put holes every two inches on center so that the resin can travel from one side of the board to the other side in the vacuum infusion process. We've also milled a little groove in there because we're going to stick a little strip of carbon, uh, mostly for looks, but it'll give it a little bit of stiffness too inside that groove. So you can see it's perfed. We want to make sure our perforations go all the way through. If you don't have a CNC machine, no big deal. You can do it by hand as well. Uh, drill with actually a nail and it works really well uh, if you're doing it by hand. The next step is we're gonna cut our fiberglass skins. We're gonna cut uh, our top skin right exactly to the size of the board. And then our bottom skin, we're gonna cut about an inch to an inch and a half oversized so that we can wrap that skin up around the edge of the board and onto the deck so we've got a nice covered rail that's protected uh, from any damage and, and protected with fiberglass. So Anton's marking that out right there uh, and then he's going to cut it out. We're using 20 ounce triaxial fiberglass. Uh, this is a fiberglass that's often used in skis and snowboards uh, as well as other projects. Uh, we've used it in our kiteboard projects as well. And so he's cut out that bottom, or the top skin, I'm sorry, uh, that you see up in the upper right hand corner there, exactly the size of the board. And now this skin he's cutting out about an inch and a half oversized. Again, we're going to use that to wrap around the edge and give us a nice solid edge that's protected all the way around. So once we have our skins ready, what we're going to do is we're going to use some spray glue. And we're going to spray glue our reinforcements in place. So this is really one of the nice things about infusion. It allows you to be really precise and get things right where you want them before you mix up resin and, and start trying to get things wet out. Uh, so he's got that carbon strip there down the middle, uh, spray glued in place, and now he's going to spray glue the bottom skin. And you may be using a little bit more spray glue than you need. Uh, go sparing with it. Uh, you don't need a lot, just enough to hold everything in place. So he put the core on top of that, and now he's going to cut some darts that allow him to wrap that fiberglass skin around the core. Again, this is what gives our edge uh, strength and protection from you know when your board crashes into things, and you don't want that to get damaged. So he's going to wrap that around. So cut some darts, <clears throat> use some more spray glue, uh, and wrap that around all the way. In this particular case, he didn't do it, but you can do it. Sometimes I'll leave that end piece long, and I'll actually have it stick out over onto the mold surface. The reason I do that is that gives you something to grab to get the board out of the mold when you're done. Uh, he didn't do that in this case. They were able to get it out of the mold. Uh, so no harm, no foul there, but that is an option. So once we've got that all wrapped up, uh, he's going to drop the top piece of fiberglass on it and then we'll get this loaded into the mold. Uh, what's really handy too about this is if you're going to do a number of boards while one board's in the mold you can be doing this and have you know a whole bunch of cassettes or, or pre-prepared boards ready to go. Uh, so we're going to drop that top skin on and that kind of completes what I would call a cassette. Uh, again if for a production setting you know while something else is happening in the process you could prepare a whole bunch of those. So apply some release agent to the mold, make sure it's released. Uh, believe it or not, we have had some people try that without release agent, and it did not end pretty. Uh, next we're going to apply the sealant tape. Uh, it looks like he's twisting it at the corners there. I tend to tear it off and overlap. Uh, you can do it however you want. Uh, but we apply the sealant tape at this point because as we put our materials in there, if we drop a fiber or something over the line of where the sealant tape is when we remove that paper, it'll come off uh, with it. The other reason kind of goes back to wet layup and really doesn't apply here, but if you drip resin on there if you're doing a wet layup and then try to put your tape down, it won't seal. So, 
He's also pre-installed his vacuum outline and his resin feed line. In this case, he's just running through the perimeter tape. We also have connectors that allow you to connect it through the bag, so there's a number of ways to do it. He's put the cassette into the mold, and now he's putting his process materials down. So the green material is uh, Bleeder Lease B, which is a silicone coated peel ply. It makes it easier to remove. Econoply E would also be a good option, or Night Ply. The red material is his flow media that's going to allow the resin to travel a little faster through there and wet out the part. If you noticed, he trimmed that uh, flow media so it ends about an inch and a half from the edge of the board. That's super important. Uh, once he has all that on there, uh, his feed lines, the peel ply, the flow media, and his vacuum outline, he's going to put the vacuum bag on and seal that up. One of the most important things in infusion is to get a good seal on your vac or on your bag. If your bag is not sealed and you have leaks, uh, you're going to have a high probability of losing your infusion or not being successful with it. Uh, one of the things that you do to get the bag to perform properly is put pleats in it. Uh, what the pleats do is it gives you extra bag to push down into the corners. This particular mold's pretty flat. Um, so it really doesn't need a lot of pleating, uh, but molds that have a lot of shape, you don't want to stretch the bag because the bag will relax back out when you put the resin into it. So you need to pleat it and have extra bag to get down into those corners and not rely on the stretch of the bag. So he's pulling vacuum, his initial vacuum here. He's actually letting a little air in there to release the pressure so he can move that vacuum outline. Uh, the vacuum outline you do want to get on the peel ply but as far away from the cavity of the mold as you can and he's adjusted his resin feed line once he's checked his vacuum level he'll go ahead and shoot the board or infuse it and that's what's going on here so he's opened the valve and feeding the resin into it we're using pro set inf 114 with a 210 hardener and a little bit of blue tint in there uh, to get that blue color so about 17 minutes, 18 minutes to wet that out. Uh, with the polyester resins, we'd expect about 10 minutes. With the epoxy, uh, you know, that 18 minutes is a, a good expectation. So once that's set, we're going to remove the processing materials from the board, and then we'll demold the board. If you've built this right, the trimming is really super simple. There's a little bit of flashing there and you just sand that down so it blends with the uh, surface of the deck. So we've got a really good infusion. That board looks great. Uh, really well done. And we'll see another picture of it here. He's, so he's trimmed that flashing down and all that we need to do now is drill the holes for the trucks and mount that sucker up and go ride it. So thanks for watching and uh, if you got any questions please feel free to get a hold of us. Thank you. Just to recap real quickly, what we did in this video is we put everything in that mold dry, we put it under vacuum, and then using the difference in atmospheric pressure, we pushed the resin in and the board wet itself out. We made a really great looking board that's going to bring somebody a lot of pleasure for a long time. So thanks for watching this video.